So one of the things here too is we're coaching people on how to test ride a bike. Coaching points on test riding bike, make sure you're pedaling hard enough. Test ride them all at the same saddle height and at a saddle height where you'd ride the bike. Test ride them with suspension set up in a way that is close enough to where it's not affecting how the bike fits you. And ask yourself about hand pressure. Have someone look at you on the bike. A lot of times if a bike is too small, you'll notice the rider's knees look kind of close to the bars or that they're kind of in this position as opposed to this position. If the bike looks too big, it often looks like they're reaching. You might see their shoulders going forward. If the bike is too small, you might see their shoulders kind of back. Let's get some other test riders out here so we can all kind of feel this. Who wants to go next? So let's start by just making sure the suspension's in, in range. And I would say at bare minimum, if they sit on the bike and the back looks like it moved about a fourth to a third, and the front looks like it moved like 15 to 25%, just from sitting on the bike. That's good enough for me for a test ride. If you look at the nose of the saddle and the back of the saddle, he's finding the middle point between there. He's measuring from the top of the saddle to the center of the bottom bracket. That's a very common way to measure saddle height. Let's see if that seems like a good saddle height for Jeff. As a rule of thumb, bottom bracket height aside, if, it's right, if the saddle's right at the top of your hip, that's often a good starting point. Right off the bat, to me, it looks like Jeff's knee is a little too bent at the bottom of his pedal stroke. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and get off the bike and raise it up a little bit. What we're going for here is it should feel to the rider as though it's just barely bent at the bottom of the pedal stroke. That sensation actually happens at about 30 degrees. Some signs that it's too high would include locking at the hips, or a rider pointing their toes who doesn't naturally point their toes. Uh, so the one thing I can I can note is my wrists are kind of have a bent back thing, so the bars definitely need to be rolled forward, so I'm kind of being more of this position instead of that position. So neutral to me is that this is a little, maybe a little forward of neutral. Neutral to me is that the rise almost straight up, maybe slightly back. So neutral can mean kind of like what an average, kind of the average of all riders. And it can also mean what puts that rider in a position where more would be bad and less would be bad. Kind of the Goldilocks spot. Yeah. When you are in the saddle pedaling around here, you're going to be going uphill. You're going to be putting out a pretty good effort. You are going to be forward. So if you don't get the rider to put out a decent effort, they will often buy a bike that's too small. For position on the bike that indicates that the bike either fits or doesn't fit, I want to start with the idea of a handshake position. A handshake is always with elbows slightly bent, the upper arm comes down a little bit, and the lower arm almost straight out but down a little bit. It's always the same. No one's ever going to shake hands any other way. On a road bike, it's really just the handshake position. On a mountain bike, the hands flatten out and go out a little bit from the handshake position. So if you see a customer on a bike and they're reaching past the handshake position, that bike might be too big. Not reaching as far as you would for a handshake, that bike might be too small. The other primary indicator that I use is hand pressure. If you have less hand pressure, you're less likely to have shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain while you're riding the bike. It's a very direct correlation for me and it's been proven, it's been shown over and over again during the process. Intermediate and advanced riders will get on the bike and automatically put their, their foot in a spot where they pedal. Beginners will tend to not do that. We can coach beginner riders to find a spot where more or less the ball of their foot is just in front of the pedal axle and try to keep it that way for all the test rides. Notice how much more fluid that looks. Interesting. Like, that bike feels horrible. <laughs> uh, and it's the roll of the bars and it's the angle of the saddle and if so, I didn't know what I was feeling I would just say no you'd be amazed how often people who don't like their saddles just need to have their saddle level out I'll tell them to show me on the saddle where it hurts them and if it's anywhere in this zone we'll try lowering the nose if it's in this zone that usually means they need a wider saddle so this is a really fuzzy topic but we want to go over what height ranges work with what bike sizes for mountain biking 
Um, let's start with extra small. I think extra small is generally for people somewhere in the neighborhood of, Kim, what do you think, 5'1 and shorter? Four, four, Probably 4'8 to 5'1-ish. Yeah, about. So, so maybe some 5'2 riders would prefer extra small, but at that point maybe you're starting to get more towards small. Yeah. In my mind, somewhere around 5'6, five, 5'7, five, you start to sometimes be more medium -y. I think some 5'6 riders are still small, some are medium. And then somewhere around 5'10, we start to wonder if you're a large. And you, st you might still see some, some mediums, but a lot of fi more 5'10 riders are probably going to get a large. Probably somewhere around 6'1, you start to think you might be an extra large. And some 6'1 riders will still get a large, but more 6'1 riders will probably be ex more comfortable on an extra large. And then I think somewhere around 6'4 or so, you might want to try a double extra large. Yeah, find the biggest bike you can find. And if you're really over about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, it really is just, you'll like a double extra large, get the biggest double extra large you can get. 